that this was such a strange animal. She said, we always thought that animal was strange. And the reason that we moved it around so much was that it wouldn't ever breed with our lingos. Every zoo, we took it to zoos with the lingos and it would never breed. Well, that was impossible. They were entirely different species. She wasn't just fussy. They weren't even the right species. So that's ring girl. And you might have noticed looking at ring girl, looking at some of these red pelts, looking at some of the field photos from Ecuador, that olinguitos are kind of variable. They look different. One of the most exciting aspects of this discovery is that there are actually four different kinds of olinguito. Okay, there are four subspecies. So we're naming not just a new species today, we're naming four different kinds of subspecies. And this is especially shocking. You might expect if a new mammalian carnivore hasn't been discovered till 2013 that maybe it lives on one mountaintop. But this animal is well distributed through the mountains of Colombia and Ecuador. So four subspecies, reliant only on these endangered cloud forest habitats. The species itself we're not classifying as an endangered animal. And that's because we realize now that it lives in enough areas of the Andes um, that there must be many thousands of them. But that's not to say that they're not threatening pressures. And the biggest one is deforestation of these cloud forests home. So when we look at the elevation and habitat that Olinguitos occur in, we can see that a lot of it looks like this today. It's no longer cloud forest. It's been converted to agriculture or even cities. Um, some of it's natural, but the forest isn't there anymore. So only about a third of habitats that Olinguitos can use are still out there. So not endangered yet, but there's reason to be concerned. And we hope that with the discovery of this Olinguito and showing this beautiful animal to the world that we can draw some attention to these cloud forests, these uh, restricted and threatened habitats where many other different types of plants and animals are found. And just there's so much more to learn about the Olinguito. I tell people that discovering a new species is a little bit like having a child. You introduce it to the world and then it goes off and has a life unto its own. And that's kind of exciting as a zoologist. We name the Olinguito, we tell people that it exists. Then it's up to the rest of the zoological community to go out and find out what they can about it. Now we've started, we've started to learn as much as we can, um, but there's a long way to go. We've just had those broad strokes. One of the questions is, where else does the Olinguito occur? We know it lives in these blue dots, these places along the map. And in the red areas are areas, core areas connected to the blue dots that we think it must occur in. But there's some other high probability areas stretching into eastern Colombia, maybe even into Venezuela, and down into Peru. Does the Olinguito live in even more countries? We are, at, from today, we're going to be asking our South American colleagues to see if they can find out. Let's see what we can learn about the Olinguitos. So, wrapping up, coming back to that original question about the Olingos, did we solve it? Yes, in the paper we published today, we finally have come to resolution for the first time about Olingos. We report as much as we can about their biology and we solve this question of how many kinds there are. There are three species of Olingo and the sister species, that sister lineage, to all of these others, the, the most closely related animal to the Olingos is this unexpected new arrival, the Olinguito. And we have mapped the range of all four species for the first time and demonstrated that none of these species are highly endangered, but identified some of the concerns